Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a radical equation. But, but before we do that, let me introduce you to the official CyberMath Amazon store. On this page, you're going to find some items that I use to, for making videos and also some items that I recommend for purchasing. I'm also going to be including some books there pretty soon. Let me go ahead and show you real quick. So here's the page and I share the link down below and also in the description. So I'm going to include some books here as well. Books that I love, books that I have, books that I use. All right, let's continue with the problem. So we have this radical equation square root of x plus 2 equals x squared minus 2. And we're going to be solving for x values and we're going to look at a couple different things. So when you have an equation like this, the first method is usually the brute force method, which is just trying very hard to solve the problem in any way we can. So we're going to go ahead and start by squaring both sides because we have a radical. That's going to give us x plus 2 equals x to the fourth minus 4x squared plus 4. And then the next step should be bringing everything together and coming up with a quartic equation, right? x to the fourth minus 4x squared minus x plus 2 equals 0. Awesome. Let's go ahead and take this equation and we're going to see how we can solve it in different ways. All right. So here's our quartic equation. To solve this, we can do a couple different things here. First of all, I can go ahead and try to factor this into two factors, such as x squared plus ax plus b and x squared minus ax plus c. Now, why did I pick ax and negative ax for the linear terms? Because when you distribute you're, got, you're not going to have an x cubed term. They're going to cancel out. And notice that we don't have x cubed here. So this is a depressed quartic, a quartic in depression, right? So that's nice because missing the x cubed term is a good thing. So from here, you can distribute the whole thing. You get x to the fourth, and then x cubed is going to cancel out, so I don't even need to write it. Cx squared, and then a x cubed is going to cancel out minus a squared x squared plus a cx. And then finally, plus bx squared minus abx plus bc. And again, to make things even easier on yourself, since b times c is 2, you can actually replace c with 2 over b, right? Let's go ahead and do that as well. So our problem is going to be even easier than this, okay? But what is that going to change? So we kind of have to maybe start over. It's probably easier. Let's go ahead and distribute one more time. x to the fourth, a good exercise, right? Plus 2 over bx squared. And then that's it. And then ax cubed is going to cancel out. So minus a squared x squared plus 2a over b multiplied by x. And then finally bx squared minus abx plus 2. Of course, the 2s are going to agree. That's the constant term. So we don't have to worry about it. We only have two variables, by the way. Notice that we have only two variables. But what does that mean? Let's go ahead and put these together. The coefficient of x squared is 2 over b minus a squared plus b. And then that is equal to this, this, and that. In the original equation, that's equal to minus 4. And then we have the x term, which is 2a over b minus ab. And that's the coefficient of x, which is equal to negative b, negative 1. And then the constant is the constant. Make sense? So we kind of have like two variables and two equations, so it should be solvable, right? But here's the problem. If you use any method like maybe substitution or elimination, you're going to run into some interesting stuff. Anyways, let's go ahead and do a little bit. Maybe we're not going to finish this. What I notice here is I can kind of multiply everything by b and get something like this. Oops, I forgot the second term. Uh, minus, when I multiply by b, it's going to be a squared b. And here the b is going to cancel out. We're going to get 2a minus a squared b equals negative b. Great. Now from here, notice that we can isolate b. b a squared b minus b equals 2a. Factor out of b, you're going to get a squared minus 1 equals 2a. 
and then from here b equals 2a over a squared minus 1. So we were able to write b in terms of a, and then what we can do with that is plug it in here and here, and then come up with a single equation. Again, that equation should be cubic, and you can kind of solve it. There's obviously other methods that you can use to solve it, but I'm going to leave it to you guys to figure out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the second method real quick, because that method is awesome. And we've probably do not done a similar problem before, because I love this type of problem. Now, the next thing we're going to do is actually not squaring both sides, doing something smarter, and that's called substitution. So I'm going to go ahead and call this whole thing y. That implies that this is also y, so that gives me the square root of x plus 2 equals y. If I square both sides, notice that I have two variables, but my equation is a lot simpler. And then subtracting 2 from both sides is going to give me x equals y squared minus 2. Awesome. Take a look at this. By this assumption, we're also getting that y equals x squared minus 2. And that's just awesome. Look at the symmetry. Look at the beauty of the system. Of course, we're from a single variable equation, we go to a system which kind of looks harder, but actually it's easier to solve. How? By way of subtracting. Subtract and subtract. 2 is going to cancel out. We're going to end up with something like this. Now, you may want to factor this, so let's go ahead and subtract this from both sides. So it's going to be y squared minus x squared minus x minus y equals 0. And that just turns into plus y minus x. And then we can factor this. y plus x, y minus x, right? Plus 1 times y minus x, so that it's factorable. I just wrote a 1. And now y minus x is a common factor. And now I can take it out. And that gives me y plus x plus 1 equals 0. Awesome. What does that mean, though? This means y minus x is equal to 0 which means y is equal to x. That's awesome. We'll take a look at it. And the second part gives us y plus x equals negative 1. And basically, let's not skip a step here. y plus x plus 1 equals 0. And that means y is equal to either neg negative x minus 1, or you can kind of write it as y plus i x equals negative 1. Doesn't matter, no big deal. We got two equations. But remember, y is equal to what? x squared minus 2. Awesome. Let's go ahead and replace y with x squared minus 2. And that gives us this equation and this equation. Right? Awesome. Let's go ahead and work on each one. This one is going to give me x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0, which can be factored into x minus 2 and x plus 1. And then from here, I get two solutions. x is 2 and x is negative 1. We're going to test both of them. But let's take a look at this one. This one is kind of more interesting. x squared plus x minus 1 equals 0. You should remember this problem. Qu quadratic formula gives, gives us negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. That's going to give us square root of 5. Do you, rem do you recognize this? If you say golden ratio, then you're totally right about that. But there are two solutions, and let me tell you something they're not all going to work. Because you can kind of go back. The problem with this problem is it's a radical. So we always have to check our work, right? What's the original problem? The square root of x plus 2, let's go ahead and write it down here, is x squared minus 2. So we, can't, we have to make sure that uh, x plus 2 is positive or non-negative, which means x is greater or equal to negative 2. And then this quantity is also non-negative, which means x squared minus 2 is greater or equal to 2, I mean 0, which means x squared is greater or equal to 2. But if you think about it, if x is negative 1, its square is not going to be greater or equal to 2, so we have to discard it. And there's another solution we have to discard, and this brings us to the graph and to the end of this video. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know, don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.